And our keynote today adds one more scholarship recipient to our long list of Latino professionals doing excellent work in our community. Tanya Sanchez is a bilingual admissions counselor at Portland State University, where she helps recruit Latino first-generation students to PSU. Tanya was also one of our scholarship recipients and at one point worked at the chamber coordinating the scholarship program itself. I'm pleased to introduce Tanya Sanchez as this year's keynote speaker. I'm a little shorter, so. <clears throat> a little over two years ago, I walked by Gail's office and heard her and Mary Ann trying to figure out who could be the keynote speaker for that year's scholarship luncheon. So, yo de metiche, went in and said, hey, in two years I'll be done with my master's and gladly will be your keynote speaker. I don't think they realized I was joking at the time because, well, here I am, two years later, as the keynote speaker for the scholarship luncheon. Gail, Marianne, just an FYI, I was kidding. When Marianne approached me um, to talk here, she told me, just share your story. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. As I reflect on my journey, I realized that a lot of the people that inspired me was because they shared their story, because I was able to relate and connect to those stories. My story doesn't begin with me, it begins with my parents. Like many of us here today, I'm a child of immigrant parents who came here to the U.S. in search of a better life. All of the opportunities and accomplishments I have had have not been because of my merits alone, but because of the sacrifices of my family. My parents came to the U.S. in the 80s in search of a better future. Both my parents have worked labor, hard labor jobs with, for little pay just so we could have a chance at some of the opportunities that they didn't have. I was born in San Jose, California and lived there up until I was about 11 or so. And then um, my parents decided to move to Oregon. As I look back on that move from San Jose to Oregon, I realized that this was a move of much sacrifice. Um, you see, back in San Jose, we had um, family. So we had tios, tias, primos. My parents both had stable jobs, and they had recently purchased their um, first home. So why did they move? They did it for us. They did it for my siblings and I. You see, we used to live on the east side of town, where many of the neighborhoods were infiltrated with gangs, um, drugs, crime. The schools we attended were actually ranked one of the worst in the states. When I entered middle school, I remember a lot of my classmates starting to join gangs and experiment with drugs. At one point, a gang threatened to hurt me if I didn't join. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. My parents wanted to make sure that we could grow up in a safe environment and have an opportunity to quality education. When we moved here to Oregon, I grew up in Beaverton and attended Southridge High School. Southridge is known for its strong academics as it offers IB and AP courses and has a lot of resources for students to be successful. I, however, as a first generation student, didn't know of all the resources that were available to me. And when it came time to apply to college, I kind of went under the radar and didn't apply. I remember it was halfway through my senior year and all of my friends were getting their college acceptance letters. One day at lunch, one of my friends, her name was Glory, ran up to the table with the paper in hand and said, I got in. She was super excited. She had just been accepted to the University of Washington and had received a very generous scholarship to go. And that was her dream school, so we were all really excited for her. Then all of my friends started sharing where they were gonna go, what they were planning to do, so on and so forth. During that lunch period, I stayed quiet because even though I did want to go to school and I had the desire, I didn't know how to apply to college, so I hadn't applied to any schools. Lunch ended that day, and me and Glory were walking back to class, and I remember as we were walking, she stopped and looked at me and said, Tanya, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, probably just go to a community college and transfer somewhere else later. She said, well, there's nothing wrong with the community college. She's like, but wouldn't you want to go to a university? 
She knew that I wanted to go to law school and become a lawyer. That was my dream at the time. Um, so I told her, yes, that would be nice, but I don't have money to go to school, and my parents don't have money to send me to school either. She said, it's called scholarships, Tanya. Um, you're brown, you're first generation, you're kind of poor, so there's a lot of money for you to go to school. I said, well, even if that was the case, even if I wanted to go, all the deadlines have passed, so it doesn't matter, it's pointless. She said, nope. See, Glory was very book smart, not very street smart, but very book smart. So she had done all her research and knew that PSU had rolling admissions, so it wasn't too late to apply. And she also knew about a lot of scholarships, so she told me that there was still some available. Well, after arguing with her for quite some time before class, mind you, she was actually the one that ended up going to law school and is finishing up her last year. So she was good at arguing. Um, so the, uh, that was the end of the conversation, or so I thought. A few weeks later, I was checking the mailbox a little bit more often than usual because it was report card time, so I would always filter those out for my mom. Um, so I was checking for that report card, and instead I found a letter from PSU addressed in my name. When I opened the letter, the first lines that I read said, congratulations, Tanya, you've been accepted at Portland State University for the fall of 2007. And while I was very naive to the whole college admissions process, I knew that colleges didn't randomly go around accepting students or know where you lived or spelled your name right for that matter. So later that evening, um, I was on a three-way call. Some of you may be too young to understand what a three-way call is because it's before cell phones were big. But I was on a three-way call and Gloria and my other good friend were on the, other two, the two other lines. And I remember telling them about this letter that I had received from PSU and how I had to go to PSU the next day to get this figured out. I didn't know what was going on. And I could hear Glory kind of giggle in the background. So I thought to myself, what did you do? She's like, please don't be mad at me. So I knew she did something. Please don't be mad at me. I was like, what did you do, Glory? She's like, well, remember that community service project that our group had to sign off on? Yes. Well, remember I had you re-sign because I told you I messed up on the first page? Yes. She was like, well, that was actually your signature to your application. So I'm not sure how she got my personal information, a little bit creepy, um, but I signed it, and I don't know if that was illegal or not, but I'm here, I graduated, I'm okay with that. So, so ironically, the girl that helps hundreds of students apply for college has a little, dirty little secret, and that is that she did not apply to college herself. Um, now, I don't think I would have been successful in graduating had it not been for the people and organization that believed in me enough to actually invest in me. The Chamber was actually the first organization that provided me with a scholarship, and it started with this. This hangs up in a frame at the Chamber office, and it is an article that was in the Oregonian of a Latina student, Sarah, who was attending Portland State and had received a scholarship from the Chamber. Well, one day, I came home from school, and my mom said, I have a surprise for you. It's not every day you come home from school and your mom has a surprise for you. So I was actually really excited, thinking it was a gift of some sort. Well, it turned out she had this article for me to read, and that was her surprise. Um, some surprise, right? So she said, then, read this. Uh, my coworker gave this to me and said you should look into it. After reading the article, I felt inspired to apply. However, when I looked at the deadline, it was only two days away. Miraculously, I don't know how, but I got everything together and was able to submit my, um, my documents on time. And then two months later, it turns out, that that paid off because I was a recipient for a $6,000 four-year scholarship. The Hispanic Chamber not only gave me $6,000 to help pay for college, it also changed my life. In 2007, the Chamber was the first organization that awarded me a scholarship that served as a vehicle to complete my bachelor's degree. The Hispanic Chamber Scholarship was the difference between my failure or success. It was the difference between being a Latino college dropout or a Latino college graduate. 
Having been awarded the scholarship as a high school senior, I had the confidence and determination to succeed and not adhere to the preconceived notions of failures that were imposed on me by others. Thanks to the Chamber's investment in me, I was able to be the first in my family to walk across that stage and wave my diploma and see my parents out in the crowd and think to myself, I did it, Mom and Dad. We did it. After graduating college, I had the privilege of working at the Hispanic Chamber as a scholarship coordinator. The same organization that shaped my educational journey would also be the one to lay the foundation for my professional development by allowing me to participate in the Latino Leadership Program and helping me gain skills that I never knew I was capable of obtaining. As scholarship coordinator, I was able to work with different constituencies and do scholarship outreach at the local high schools and throughout the community. It was through my position at the chamber that I realized my passion for education and was able to comprehend the impact of our work. Through outreach, presentations, workshops, and meetings, I was able to witness how education intervenes and helps provide opportunities that help change lives, not only of students and their families, but of future generations. It was that passion for education that led me back to PSU. I feel very fortunate to be working at my alma mater. PS, I, I love working with a school that helps provide access and resources for students like myself to be successful. I have the opportunity to work with some of the most dedicated individuals who genuinely care about providing equitable resources for students to be successful. At PSU, um, I am able to work with students and families and guide them through the admissions process. As the bilingual counselor, I have the privilege of working closely with the Latino community. As many of you know, working with students isn't always easy, but it can definitely be rewarding. As an admissions counselor, you don't always get to see what happens to students after working with them for that first year. However, there have been some students that I um, am able to keep in touch with or that I see on, cam on campus. One of the most rewarding experiences is when I had the opportunity to work with two students. Their names were Enrique and Fabian. I met Enrique and Fabian while doing a school visit during the fall, um, and it was during their senior year. They didn't quite meet the admissions requirements at the time, so I told them what they needed to do that year to get admitted. And let me tell you, they worked hard all year to get admitted. They met with me on a regular basis, sometimes too regularly, but they did. Um, they improved their grades significantly, and they worked really hard to, and did everything on their end to get into PSU. Finally, after advocating for them throughout the year a few times, I finally got the yes, and they were granted admissions to Portland State late that summer. I still remember making that call that day and talking to them. I told them, listen, I believe you guys will do great. I know you guys will do great, but I want you guys to prove that once you're at PSU. They promised me they, they would, and they did just that. Later that year, I attended the Cesar Chavez Leadership Conference and had asked for PSU student volunteers to help me table at the college fair. And guess who two of those students were? Enrique and Fabian. I was able to talk to them during the event, and they let me know how much they were enjoying their time at, at Portland State and how good they were doing, and how they even had received a 4.0 their first term at PSU. Enrique said something to me that I will always remember. He said, I told you we wouldn't let you down if you gave us a chance. I just want to tell you thank you, and that I don't know where I would be had it not been for you. You believed in us, worked with us all year, and it has changed our lives, so thank you. Now Enrique and Fabian are finishing up their second year at PSU and working towards their degree in business. They are both mentors um, in the PSU Ganas program, which is a retention program for first-generation Latinos. And Enrique is actually now working with um, the AVID program at his old high school, where he now mentors and tutors other students whose shoes he was once in and helping them get into college. This story is an example of many um, of many stories that I've had working in higher education. That these stories are the ones that inspired me to continue my education and pursue a master's degree. I wanted to better prepare myself when I was working with students such as Enrique and Fabian. About two years ago, I began my master's program at PSU. 
What actually encouraged me to finish the program, because it's not easy going to um, school full-time and working full-time, was my family and an obstacle that we had to overcome. A couple years ago, my parents entered into a binding contract with a cleaning franchise in means of providing financial stability for our family. They took their life savings to purchase a franchise that would only turn out to be a scam, and instead of providing financial stability, imposed financial hardship. We were locked into this contract for a few years and spent countless hours taking out garbage, dusting, vacuuming, mopping, um, and numerous amounts of offices. Ironically, from eight to five, I was sitting in my own office, and from seven to nine, every day, I was cleaning out someone else's office. This was one of our greatest hardships. However, it has been one of the most humbling learning experiences I've ever had. Through this experience, I have been able to further appreciate all the sacrifices that my parents have done for me. Because of their hard work and dedication, I was given the opportunity to attend a university and be the first in my family to graduate. My education has allowed me to obtain a job in which, opportunity, in, in which I'm able to see the opportunities that education gives individuals. My education has allowed me to obtain a job in which I have the comfort of being in my own office and not have to do hard labor. But beyond that, it has given me the opportunity to pursue my passion and have the adequate knowledge and power to make a difference in the community. Every time I was sitting up at 3 a.m. in the morning writing a paper and felt like giving up, I would remember seeing my mom bent over cleaning these offices, regardless of her back pain or knee problems. I remember my dad only being able to sleep a few hours per week because we had so many offices to clean. So every time I felt tired and wanting to complain, I would remember how I was in a position of privilege to be able to go to school and that all of those sacrifices would eventually pay off. Well, they did pay off. A few weeks ago, I was able to present my final comps presentation and pass. I have officially graduated and will be walking across that stage again in June at the Moda Center, only this time to receive my master's degree. As mentioned in the beginning, everything I have accomplished is thanks to the sacrifices of my family, the helping hands of others, such as my friend Glory, and organizations such as the Chamber in Portland State that believed and invested in me. To all of you receiving a scholarship today, congratulations. You have accomplished so much. But don't ever forget who helped you along the way. As recipients, you have the responsibility to give back. <clears throat> and giving back isn't always giving money. It, giving back comes in different ways, and you don't have to wait to give back. It starts now. It can start today. To all of the sponsors here today, thank you. Because of you, many of these students here today will have the opportunity to reach their dreams and help create a better future, not only for themselves and their families, but for our community. Sponsors, by being here today, you are serving as role models for these students who someday will be sitting in your seats sponsoring a student of their own. And finally, to the Chamber and all their hardworking and dedicated staff, gracias. The Hispanic Chamber helped pave the road to my academic success and professional development. My experience with the Chamber is simply one of hundreds in this community. My <clears throat> I am proud to be part of this Chamber legacy um, and I would hope that you too would want to be part of this legacy. Um, I know that on the tables there are some envelopes and to help continue to support these students and continue to support the scholarship um, program that we have. And if it wasn't for this program, I know that I would not be here today. So thank you.